Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. I promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. <laughs> You are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on NBC News, CNBC News, and NBC Sports Radio Station KCAA, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music, Audible, uh, Tiki Live, Rumble, Podchaser, and more. Why so many places? Because I want the maximum splatter zone to give you some hope and happiness to start the day. So thank you for joining me on my drive time morning show, the number one 8 a.m. show talk news in the IE and beyond. I am Dr. Marissa. You know me as the Asian Oprah. I, I was actually introduced to Oprah as the Asian Oprah by Michael Bernard Beckwith, my big brother. And she looked at me, looked down, looked back up at me, smiled and said, nice pants. <laughs> and it took everything for me not to say, uh, do you want them? <laughs> so that's the story behind my honorable moniker. And I'm so glad you've joined me today, especially since we have a new function and I see the troops are coming in. I see the eyeballs. That means that you're streaming with me. So I'm so grateful. I have a new sound engineer. He's right with me now. Sam is his name. And I'm so delighted we figured out how to get this to stream. And uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can call in to ask a question. Anything, relationships, uh, job and career, health and wellness, we'll be doing that again tomorrow. You can put your questions in the chat or you can even come on, I'll put a link in the chat for you to come on the air with me. That's Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I'm looking forward to that. But today, we have a guest, and I know that some of you who were on uh, Facebook and my LinkedIn got a chance to watch a really important, poignant film called Robin. And he's a filmmaker, and he's a, I'm going to bring him on uh, in a little bit to talk about his book, his film, and more. I also wanted to tell you about the compliment line. And this is something that I wanted to institute. We can do this every single day. If you have a compliment that you want to pay someone on my show, and if you're not too poor to pay attention, but I'm um, sorry, <laughs> I couldn't resist, but, uh, you know, it's so difficult to find good news this, these days. Uh, if you're one that wakes up in the morning and begins to scroll, guaranteed 90% of the time the things that you're looking at will not make you feel good. So I wanted to institute a compliment line so that we can all start off in the most positive way possible because that will give you really high probability of having a really good day after that. So the other thing I wanted to start with is taking a bite of my gratitude sandwich. So y'all know, if you've heard me on stage, one of my happy 88 tools from my best-selling book, y'all know, Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are, is starting your day immediately with eight specific gratitudes. So I thought, you know, I'm going to practice what I teach despite the name of my show. So what I'd like the people that are streaming with me now, if you want your name to be identified, put it in the comment section. Um, I'm going to do my eight gratitudes with you this morning. So if we start our day this way, it's guaranteed to start uh, rolling positive momentum. So what are you grateful for? I am, and maybe Sam, you can pipe in if you want. I'm grateful for Sam, <laughs> who's my new engineer. And uh, we, uh, 
working great and he's operating my boards within uh, StreamYard now. I'm grateful that he could step in and a, and a deep breath of care out to Polly, my other engineer. He just lost his grandmother this morning. So let's just take a deep breath in through the nose and releasing ah, all the peace and care to his family as they work through this transition. And I know that she's on the other side with my dad and that it's a place of peace and beauty and wonder. Uh, I'm also grateful that I have technology on my side that I can uh, broadcast from my uh, loving room uh, here in Long Beach, all the way out to you in the IE. I'm grateful that uh, I have the most amazing coffee in the morning. I'm grateful that I have a plethora of amazing guests that I've had on my show. I'm grateful, what are we on, number five? I'm grateful that um, I've gotten to interview some really amazing people on the red carpet. And I'm like, yes, I loved interviewing John Travolta for sure. And I got two hugs from him. I'm grateful that I have a super comfortable bed. I'm grateful that I have um, two beautiful inside and out daughters. And lastly, number eight, I'm grateful that this is show number 655. I've been on 515 consecutive weeks on the air and I'm grateful for that. So those are my eight gratitudes. It's now your turn. I don't know, Sam, if you want to <laughs> tell me what you're grateful for. Uh, I Actually, I don't know if I can put you on there, but uh, we'll certainly um, uh, continue this practice because I want you to start your day in the most positive way. Now, the part that I'm not going to do with you is the bottom of the gratitude button. Now, why is the bottom important? Uh, if you're the average person, there's an epidemic right now of people not being able to fall asleep. And it's in my opinion, not always humble, uh, that one of the reasons why you can't fall asleep is you're thinking about all the things that went wrong or did not get done in your day. Especially if you're a perfectionist. If you're someone that is constantly saying, um, oh, I forgot to do this, or I shouldn't have done that, or I wish I had done that, or I can't believe they said that to me, and how dare they? All of those thoughts will not let you fall asleep. That's normal. So in order to help you fall asleep, if you can change your uh, focus your, and choose to focus on you and how good you are. Now I'm talking about saying, oh, I'm such hot shiitake and you know, my shiitake doesn't stink, not like that. But if you can learn how to uh, strengthen your muscle of self-approval, we talked about this yesterday. If you can say, you know what? I, I did complete this, I didn't do this, I didn't have that donut, or I, I was able to take a walk, or I did finish this project, or I did work towards this project and I didn't get it done, but I, I you know, I also helped this person and I was kind to this person and I didn't flip this person on the freeway off with my finger, I resisted the urge. If you can come up with eight things, specific things that you did to, to make you um, approve of yourself, then you're less likely to be walking around saying, you know, who loves me? Who approves of me? Who respects me? How many likes do I have? Who said nice comments? What are my numbers? All of that matters so much less than you being able to hug yourself, to approve of yourself, to say, you know what? I'm not hot shiitake, but I'm not a piece of shiitake. I'm just pretty good shiitake. So that is what I want you to think about when we come back. It's my guest filmmaker, Shane McCabe. So don't go away. Keep it tuned to take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KCAA. A station that leaves no listener behind. I'm so used to doing 
doing that. And I'm so, I, Hi, can't hear you. Hey, Doc, I can't hear you. Can't hear you. I can't hear you at the moment. I can see you, Doc, but I can't hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. Maybe there's a little technical glitch here.
we're back. You're too do to take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on KCAA NBC News Radio AM 1050 FM 102.3 FM 106.5 and streaming everywhere, including my YouTube channel. So if you free subscribe, you'll get a no you'll get a notification at 8 a.m every weekday morning that a new show is dropping. And now, thanks to technology and my wonderful new sound engineer, Sam, we figured out how you can actually interact with me on Facebook and YouTube Live. So if you have any questions for my guest, or if you have a compliment, or if you have a question for me on Tuesdays and Thursdays, then please do put it in the chat and or call 888-909-1050. And uh, looking so forward to building a strong, positive, happy 88 community back again on social media. Now, today I have a very special guest for you. His name is Shane McCabe, and he's a writer-director from Dublin, Ireland. And I love accents, so you'll you'll just uh, enjoy this conversation just <laughs> for nothing else but the wonderful accent, who's recently located to Santa Monica in LA to pursue his dream as a filmmaker. He's just finished a commission project set in the aftermath of World War II and is currently promoting his recently published book, Breakthrough, which Shane originally wrote as a screenplay. Without further ado, please welcome to my studio, Shane McKay. Hi. Hi, Shane. Hi, how are you, Dr. Marissa? Great to be Hi. here today. Absolutely. And uh, I met Shane, those of you who... Uh, have been in my life for a while. You know that I'm one of the uh, sponsors for the Tiny Spotlight film at the Newport Beach Film Festival. And so I met Shane at the festival and he was telling me about some of his projects. And so that's why I had to have him on the show. So uh, we have so much to talk about. I think the first thing we'll talk about is the film that um, piqued my interest and that I showed on my Facebook and LinkedIn yesterday, and that's Robin. So tell me about that film and sort of uh, what's special about it. Uh, okay, well, thank you. Yeah, like I said, great to be here today. Um, for me, Robin um, is a very, very important uh, short movie that I directed, uh, written by a close friend and also produced by a close friend. Um, and it's all about suicide awareness and suicide prevention. Um, there's an awful lot. And since the pandemic, I've been reading stats that are just crazy on, on, on this topic. And it's a very dark subject. Uh, I always remember uh, talking to one or two people who had um, children take their lives. And, and, and what it was was that, you know, suicide doesn't remove the pain. It just merely transfers it to another person. And that was like that really stuck with me. So yeah. I, I was actually working on a different um, suicide prevention script at the time. And my producer friend uh, rang me, Jason Ford. And Jason had actually directed one of my uh, very first produced short films. And he said, look, at that. I've got these two actors and they're working together on, in theatre. And but they're not on stage with each other, even though it's a two hander. Have you got any? Have you got a short film? We, we could, you know, they want to work together in a movie. And I said, oh, my God, I have nothing at the moment. So I rang a, a friend of mine and he sent me two shorts. Brian McEvely is the writer of Robin. And, you know, to this day, I still haven't read the second short. I, I read Robin and I said, oh, my God, i got to make this movie. So things happened very quickly. Um, Jason loved it. The actors loved it. And then we approached a... Uh, a hospital actually in Dublin and they gave us the facilities we gave them a great pitch and they gave us the facilities and we were able to shoot there over two days uh, ended up only one day shoot because I didn't realize we were right beside a construction site so <laughs> you know the life of a filmmaker we had to uh, condense it into one day and we got one of the most beautiful sunny days and, and we, we shot the movie and uh, two great performances by um, the two actors in it and um, Katie Honan and, and Rex Ryan I knew of both of them um, as actors. 
I had seen their work. And so when Jason said, look, we've got these two actors, we've got to do something. And both of them loved it. And they, they all came on board for nothing. You know, nobody charged on this. Wow. We had a small outlay on maybe on a little bit of, on post. But um, so when we finished, we, we shot the movie and we we, uh, we I we got a picture lock, which is kind of where you haven't done any coloration or, uh, or sound mix or anything like that. I sent it to a, a guy called Craig Stuart Garfinkel, who is a Hollywood um, composer. And he got back straight away again. Oh, my God, you're not going to believe it. But I, I've been working on something and it's perfect. And it's yours. It's for free. So our whole, so Craig came aboard and we got a shot and we had our world premiere at the Beverly Hills International Film Festival in 2020. And then it was right at the pandemic. Uh, so the festival had to go online. There was no in-person meetings as we all, we've all lived through the pandemic. And, you know, a lot of us have been lucky enough to come out to the other side. We talk about being grateful and, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people who've been very sick. Uh, I don't know too many people who've had lo lost loved ones. I know a few, but uh, we talk about being grateful. Being able to get up in the morning after COVID is a, is, is a gratitude. Absolutely. So my whole concept with Robin is that it's free to air. It's free to anyone to use. We're not we're not interested in uh, trying to monetize this. It's on YouTube. I think if you just Google Robin, you've put the links up. Yes. So if people want to use this or want to contact me, um, the whole concept behind Robin, and there's a bit of a spoiler alert here for the movie, is that we all have a Robin in our life. We all have someone who means a lot to us. And it's so important. And, and we also are someone else's Robin, that we mean a lot. And it's so important for us to actually tell that person, you know, what they mean. Yes. Uh, so that's kind of, and, and I'm not saying this is going to stop suicide worldwide, but if you if it helps prevent one then 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 it's done its job yeah absolutely and that's why you're on my show because i just think that's such an important message and uh eva says true suicide doesn't remove the pain it just transfers it to another person i have never heard that and i absolutely uh love that the, the yeah. one that i have heard is uh, uh suicide is a permanent uh solution to a temporary problem yeah I call it an equal opportunity destroyer. Yeah. Now you had someone yourself uh, in your family. Sure. Yeah. Well, I've had family members commit suicide. Like, um, so my my dad was a twin. My dad's brother committed suicide many many years. I was only a little kid at the time, and wow. he, he committed suicide. And um, my my own father uh, attempted it twice. He suffered very badly with oh, wow. uh, manic depression, and we were able to save him on two occasions. And he got he got help and he lived a really good life afterwards you know so uh, yeah. that was it and my you know That's great. Uh, it's it's uh i mean he lived a good life to be like nine uh, he sorry he was 84 years of age when he uh -huh. eventually passed away which is a good yeah. good, good time yeah. that was many many years ago That's but yeah it's it's you're right it's it's a it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem yeah and just how you know i used to say um it's the most selfish thing a person can do. But you know what? I I backed off of that because I don't know what that person's going through. Yeah. And sometimes that relief, you know, however much pain it transfers, is the best that they can do. I'm not yeah. advocating it. I'm not, you know, saying that it's okay. But, uh, you know, they have to be in so much pain that they would rather you know, not have the opportunity to feel better. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. and, and there's so many contributing factors to this. So many that each one is different to the next. It's not like a monolith that you, right. there's a panacea out there to, to, to stop this. Absolutely. So, um, but I think if you, you know, my idea behind this was kind of maybe even bringing it into schools and colleges and, and create, creating a talking point uh, 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 as a short film, um, you know, yeah, I teach yeah, short so filmmaking. I well, I, before I moved out to LA, I did it in Ireland. I taught short filmmaking. So, right. uh, so short movies that I would have made, I would uh, we would go into the classrooms and discuss how to make a short movie, how to write a movie, how to make it, then have the class act out the script, and then show them the movie at the end, yeah. which was a, 
a good way of doing it. So it is. It is. If you go on YouTube, you can find the movie by putting in Robin and Shane McKay. That's how I found it. It's the first one that pops up. Yeah, great. We have so much more to talk about, but sure. we have to take a break and we're gonna come back and talk about his new book. Now, why would a filmmaker write a book? So we're gonna find out the answer to that when we return. So keep it here. Don't go away on Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. You have no idea. I had to teach. Take back.
Back Your Life with Dr. Marisha Pay. And welcome. You are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on NBC News Radio, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music, Music, iTunes, Audible, Tiki Live, Rumble, Podchaser, and more. <laughs> I am Dr. Marissa, your hostess with the hashtag positively opinionated opinion. And I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, if you'd like to be part of my happy 88 mission, which is 88 million more happy people in the next eight years, go to drmarissa.life and you'll get a free get happy tip sheet with ways in which you can quickly find to find happiness and choose happiness. And tomorrow is call-in day. I am looking forward to your questions where I get to be Dr. Marissa, the kinder, gentler Dr. Laura on uh, the show. So you can call in at 888-909-1050, as well as just put your question in the chat now that I'm live streaming on Facebook Live, as well as YouTube channel live. So uh, please do go and check out that channel. You'll see my red carpet playlist with interviews with gold medal Olympians, with uh, Quincy Jones, with Melissa Etheridge. So I have a plethora of really interesting people there that you can access on my free YouTube channel. And today I have a special guest here. He is uh, originally from Dublin, Ireland, and he's a filmmaker, writer, director, and now author. So please welcome back to the show, Sean McKay. <laughs> you notice I like affirming I, people with uh, with the applause. Does that feel <clears throat> I love it. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. So. I uh, I promised that we would come back and talk about your book. And then if we Thank have you. time, I know you have other film projects. Uh, sure. So we're actually going to eliminate one of the breaks so we have a little more time to okay. talk about it. So tell me, what, why a book? I mean, you, you, you're... You well, yeah. I mean, really, I'm, I'm a writer-director. I'm, 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 I'm a writer with huge aspirations to eventually direct my first feature. I've directed a lot of short movies, movies I've written myself, movies other people have written, like Robin was written by somebody else. And uh, I've written quite a few uh, TV shows. Uh, I'm pitching them at the moment. I've written a few, uh, quite a few uh, feature movies that I'm pitching. And in writing any movie for all the film people out there and, and all the writers out there, they'll, they'll know the, uh, the, the dreaded treatment. Everyone has to write a treatment. Some studios will only read a treatment. Some studios will only, want, will only read a script. Some people only want to read a treatment or and a script. So in writing a screenplay, a treatment is kind of like the last exercise you do. And it's usually an eight to 10 to 15 page outline of what the movie would, would be, will, the, the movie script will be. Imagine you've been to a movie and someone asks you, okay, write about what that movie is about. And then you, you write like a book report. So, but in writing this particular uh, movie, it was called Breakthrough. I wrote a ridiculously long treatment. I was like, I have 25 pages of, you know, uh, letterhead, letter, letter size pages. So I said, oh, I'm kind of halfway there to a novel. So I, I, I wrote the treatment, wrote the script, finished the script and said, I'm just going to write this as a novel. Uh, I, I, I'm a huge fan of, 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 of reading. I've read so many books. Um, so I said, okay. Let's write it as a, as a novel. And I did. And it's out now. So there we go. Yay! It's called Breakthrough. Yeah, it's so cool to see your name published on a, on a, on a book. It's available in uh, Barnes & Noble and Amazon and also Kindle. So anybody who wants to can get it. It's just titled Breakthrough. Put in Breakthrough by Shemma Cape. So, yeah, I'm really, really excited. That's wonderful. Congratulations for that. And I love the... The um, byline here, if you love murder, mystery, cop thrillers, but with a slight nod to the supernatural, this one could be for you. So that's yeah. a, a little teaser because we definitely teaser. don't want to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, there's a like, I mean, 
it, it, in some ways, the script itself was inspired by a line from CSI in New York. And they always say, oh, the DNA is back and the DNA is positive. And I thought to myself, what if the DNA of the victim was a 100% match to the DNA of the perpetrator? How interesting would that be? And then I thought, well, what if the fingerprints of the perpetrator match the fingerprints of the victim? And I said, how can, you, how can that be? And that got me thinking, I'll say no more. I wrote that's how, that's <laughs> how it came say. about. Yeah, it's I, like, I, oh, my God. So, uh, yeah. So um, I like movies that are rooted in the, like the sixth sense, the mo- they're kind of rooted in reality, but have this little bit of a lilt, like got like a little bit of a lilt to the supernatural, mm-hmm. where it's not all supernatural. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. So That's great. Now, did you, when you were a kid, did you think you would be doing the things that you're doing now? No, never. 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 So what happened? I, I, so I, as, as, a, as a young, in some ways looking back, when I think as my, as a 58 year old man now, I can see my path because I've lived a life. But in the, in the time when I was an eight year old, I wouldn't have seen it. But I, I was very sick as a young kid. And I spent a lot of time in hospital, had a lot of surgery and blood transfusions and that. And, I learned to read. My mom uh, spent a lot of time with me, and I learned to read quite young. And I just devoured comics. What, as you, what, as you can do. I ask what uh, the the problem? Yeah, was? I had. It's a very strange thing. It was a malformation of my intestine, so my intestine wasn't formed properly. So mm-hmm. I had to have two major surgeries and have a lot of it removed. Wow. So yeah, yeah. Wow. So I have to be careful what I eat. <laughs> so. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad that you're you're good now. Yeah, yeah, no, no, the, it was uh, pretty, you know, it was touch and go. Um, I I got uh, the last rites twice, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's been a, a a good Roman Catholic from Ireland. You got to get the last rites, you know. So, <laughs> so, but yeah, came through. Would have, um, and then I just started reading, kept reading, and. You read books by Enid Blyton, the, the Famous Five and the Secret Seven and the Hardy Boys and, and then just moved on and, and just, I loved reading. But I, I would never have thought this. I went to college in, in Trinity College in Dublin and uh, graduated with an uh, honours degree in economics. And then I just got into acting after that. And I did a lot of kind of commercial work in front of the camera. And then I was cast in a, in a small role now, Blinking, you'll miss it, by Joel Schumacher and Jerry Bruckheimer when they came to Ireland to make a movie on um, the murder of a very famous uh, Irish uh, journalist who was murdered by drug dealers, Veronica Gearan. And she was murdered in 1996. And Kate Blanchett plays her, plays her in the lead role. It's called Veronica Gearan. Great movie. Mm-hmm. I'm in it, but you'll miss me. Blinking, you'll miss me. Uh-huh. So working on that movie really inspired me. Watching Joel Schumacher work, it was like, oh, my God. And it uh, really inspired me to get into writing uh, and, and, and directing. So, mm-hmm. it's kind of... so that, you know, the, the silver lining of all the hospitalizations is a love for reading and yeah. writing, right? Yes, yeah. 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 That, that's you know, right. sometimes, you know, we, we see a tragedy and, 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 and a hardship, but that can be something that brings in new life, you know? So Yes, for sure, for sure. That's, a, you know, Phoenix Rising, right? Yeah, and the, yeah. I mean... I was very, very young, so I don't have huge memories of it. I kind of have memories when I was about six or seven going back. I always go back to give blood. I always had to test my blood. Right, right. So that was one thing. So I hate mm-hmm. giving blood. <laughs> I bet. I bet. So let's go back to the book for a minute. Okay. And um, who who would be the ideal reader? Anybody who... Uh... You know, that's a very good question. I, I just think, you know... Um, I, I think it's nearly like a four quadrant, young, old, male, female. Um, I think people who ha- like uh, police procedurals. So if you like police procedurals and you like murder mystery, uh, and, and really it, it, it's it's not a whole lot of killings. It's, uh, you know, the, the tagline is one cop, two pass, three murders. Uh, and uh, that's kind of where what it's about. It's, there, there is three murders, but. Yeah. So those those who really like the murder mystery, that's that I would say that people okay. who really like murder mystery. So we're going to offer an Asian Oprah giveaway. If I'm going to put you on the spot, can we have one book to give away today? 100%. No problem. Okay. I'll sign it. And everything. So 
The first person to go to drmarissa.life and put in breakthrough on the subject line will get a free copy of Shane McCabe's. A signed copy. A signed <laughs> copy. <laughs> That's fabulous. Sure. Fabulous. Absolutely. The, the sure, Asian Oprah giveaway. We're not, you get a book and you get a book. No, we're not to the cars yet, but no, that's, no, that's what we're aspiring to. I'll but, be uh, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. What would you say to people who are aspiring authors or aspiring filmmakers? Uh, what, what advice could you give them? Hey, well, I, I'll, I'll deal with the writing first of all. Uh, writing doesn't cost. The only thing it costs is time. So I would say um, there's a great book out there. Uh, I would say just just do it. And I know people say, oh, that's uh, that's very easy to do. But the more you procrastinate, the less you do. And the uh -huh. more you do, the more you do. So I would say, look, at, is there an online course? Is there there's more in-person course? I like I, I did a couple of courses that were in person. So I did a, a weekend writing course on how to write a screenplay because it's it's very specific. So if you have a good idea, there's lots of books on screenwriting out there as well. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to Robert A. Berman, uh, who I don't know, but I read his book. It's called Fade In, The Screenwriting Process. Uh, and it's a absolutely super book for anyone beginning. Mm. Um, directing is a little different because it's, it's a bit of a cost. And you have to organize cast and crew. But I mean, I'm on my iPhone today, so uh, you can shoot on you can shoot on your phone. Uh, it's it's not as expensive when I started out. So I made a movie called Never Judge a Book. Uh, I was a writer and we, we got funded by that. And that was a lot of money for a short movie. It's by the way, it's a, if you look it up, it's all rated. So just be very careful before you show it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. it's, uh, yeah, it's over eight. We call it over 18s back at home because it's quite yeah. violent. But anyhow, you don't need that now. So we shot that on 16 millimeter with, with two cameras and with a huge, with a huge budget, but you don't need that now. You can shoot little things on your iPhone. So I would say, write a little, learn how to write, write a little short movie, shoot it. If you're making a short film and like with Robin, and there's another one out there I did, it's called The Barber Shop. If people look that up, it's just a cute little one uh, about a kid who is the butt of the barber's jokes, but kind of turns the tables on the barber is getting a location. If so, when you're writing, you know, don't, don't have it in a World War II bomber because you're not going to be able to get a World War II bomber. You know, is it, it, it could it be said in the studio? Do you have a friend who has a studio? So I had a friend with a barber shop, lent me the barber shop. So we were able to shoot it in the barber shop. We were able to get, for making Robin, we were able to get the facilities. Um, so yeah, think about that. Two to three to four minutes. And if possible, do comedy to start because everybody loves comedy. Ah, good advice. I didn't even think about that whole, you know, the reality of the location. To yeah. Make it. Yeah. And uh, you had a chance to watch my first short film, right? The I did. Pandemic Possibilities. Yes. Yes. And what was your reaction? I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. It was just, it was, it, was it was zany. It was zany. It was zany. I forgot to ask you. No All problem. Right. No problem. I did. I did like. No. Yeah. But like, and if you've just. But there's so in... much positivity. What I liked was your. There's a positive message, and I think if you have a nice message at the end of it, it it's. Yeah. It's Thank it, you. it's essential. There's another filmmaker who watched it, Seth Greenleaf, who's also been a, a guest on my show. Uh -huh. it, a vitamin B12 shot for hope and happiness. So I love that. Vitamin B12 <laughs> shot. That sounds great. That's a great yeah. analogy. <laughs> yeah. And two more short films, Jermansky and Money Talks, you're working on right now. Well, well, Jermansky is a, is a six-part TV series. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, so I uh, got I was commissioned by a, by a German businessman to write this. He has a diary of a World War II um, soldier fantastic kind of love story in many ways set against the insanity of world war ii and look at what we're witnessing at the moment and it's about a german soldier who was stationed in lille fell in love with a local girl unforbidden love was moved to the east fought the russians in the east lost when the german army surrendered he was able to pass himself off as a french pow and run the gauntlet of occupied uh, 
the occupied uh, states of Germany by the Russians to get back to the woman he loves. So that's a six part TV show. Um, yeah, so that's uh, really, really interesting. But based on the, we have this, this man's diary, it's an amazing, it's you Herculean tasks as he travels back uh, just to, to be reunited with, 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 with his love that's and how beautiful. he gets back to her. It's great, it's great, yeah. And you kind of need the six because you need, you know, some some shows are definitely a movie and some shows are, are six parters or yeah. eight parters, you know. Yeah. Money right. Talks, as it is, as it says, is a little bit out there, right? So I'll just warn your audience, it's a bit crazy. I also like, although, you know, I've made movies like Robin, I like the crazy part of life, you know. And Money Talks is, um, it's about two sisters, uh, two um, half sisters who meet for the very first time at, at their mother's funeral and immediately decide to kill each other. But they <laughs> accidentally, they accidentally kill the son of a notorious crime lord, a dr uh, drug boss, uh, only to find over two million in the trunk of his car. So they have to put away their sibling rivalry and work out how to dispose of the body, uh, launder the cash and stay off the radar of this crazy drug lord out to get them. So it's a very contained thriller. I don't know if you've seen the movie Panic Room, Single White Female, it's all kind of in the house. And it really is, a, it's, it's an examination of family, of one girl who's had everything in her life and yet chooses the dark side. And another girl who just wants to know who her mom was, just wants to know who her family is, wants to be part of a family and is basically thrown to the wolves by 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 the by her sister and the boyfriend mm -hmm. and how she turns the tables on them. So how do you <laughs> come up with these things? Like what's in your diet? I don't <laughs> know. I mean I frighten myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful though. It, I can tell that uh, you love what you do. And yeah. um uh, I want to just bring it right back around. We're almost uh, to the end of the show. If you're wondering who I'm talking to, it's Shane McCabe. He's a filmmaker, writer, director, and now author of the book Breakthrough. You'll want to go get that on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, Robin is the the short film that looks at suicide. Yes. Uh, a, a different angle on suicide, and he is bringing that uh, film for free. You can get it on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Eva was kind enough to put the link uh, there. You just put Robin and Shane McKay. And uh, he's happy to go into schools uh, to talk about that. And I wanted to recognize you because I don't give this to all of my guests, but uh, when someone takes something uh, to that's not happy or not um, positive and brings light to it in a way for solution, I give them the Dr. Marissa Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award. Oh, oh, so I'm giving thank that you. to you. There Fantastic. You go. Thank a, it's, you very it's much indeed. <laughs> well, gratefully accepted, Dr. Marissa. Gratefully Thank you. accepted. But, you know, I mean, I, I, I want to give a shout out to all who were involved in making this movie, especially the writer, Brian McEvely, and my, my producer, Jason Ford, and the two actors who, who came in, uh, Rex Ryan and Katie Honan, because without them, yeah. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened. And, and a big shout out to St. Luke's Hospital, who gave us the facilities in, in, in Dublin and Ireland. And uh, they're an amazing um, uh, cancer fighting hospital. And, uh, but yeah, no, I gratefully accept it. It, it. It's a very dark subject. And how do you make, how do you put a positive spin? But I hope we have achieved that with Rob. And yeah. I think people who watch it will really, will really understand, yeah. will really understand that. For sure. I'm going to get a laurel made with Dr. Marissa. I will. I'm, 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 I'll I'll be waiting for the mailman. I'll, I'll expect that in the post and in, in, in the mail. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So the last question that I ask all my guests are, is to whom or what are you most grateful for? To whom or what are you most grateful for? Okay. You, you'll make me emotional now. Good. <laughs> I love making my guests cry. So, uh, so I'll try not to go, but it's to my mom. Um, she, she passed away in nine, um, just shortly after I made the movie and I dedicate the movie to her, but uh, she was a great mom. So uh, yeah, 
and mm -hmm. she fought very hard so that I would be on the planet. So Aww. that's the yeah, that's the one I'll I'll uh, I'll cry over. <laughs> oh well, tears are the disinfectant that keep your heart. Yeah. Soft. So thank you for sharing your heart. I love it when people cry because that means their heart is wide open. So thank you for sharing that. What You're was her, what's her name? Her name was Maureen McCabe. And Maureen uh, McCabe. yeah, she lived to be ninety-two. She had a good age, and um, I was very um, kind of grateful that. I was able to look after her in her old age and mm. she was able to stay at home until about two weeks before she passed away. So mm. she had two weeks in hospital before uh, she passed. And, um, but yeah, she was yeah. great. She was funny. Yeah. Well, I can tell you got her sense of humor in your writing, if nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. But you know. uh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. No, you're welcome. Yeah. That's true. So that's yeah. the thing. So look for Shane McCabe. Uh, I think you're on Facebook, LinkedIn. Do you have a website? I don't have a website. But it's something I should have. Uh, I'm just trying to. Uh, I'm trying to juggle all the social media. I am on Twitter, but don't use it as much. But mainly on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So right. people want to contact me there. That's that's it. You'll Beautiful. you'll see my you'll see my face. My uh, so uh, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, make I've sure been, you go and get his book at Breakthrough Breakthrough on uh, there yeah, we go. Book, Breakthrough. Yeah. and uh, it's at Barnes and Noble as well as Amazon. And the first person to go to my website, drmarissa.life, and put down uh, uh, Breakthrough in the subject line will get a free signed copy to. Uh, enjoy. So I see we have one comment here. Maybe there's a question. Uh, no, there's not a question, but it's beautiful. Uh, Eva says, I miss my mom too. Much gratitude. Thank you. Looking forward to watching Robin after the show. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Cool. Eva oh, is, thank you, Eva. Yeah. She's a great supporter of my Happy 88 mission. Great. She's been with me for years. She's in Kentucky. Oh, Lovely. Yeah, so I'm grateful for her uh, being able to watch. Well, um, let's see. What can I tell you? Uh, tomorrow's show is uh, going to be a call-in show. So if you have questions about uh, should I stay, should I go, or why can't I feel good about my body, or uh, when is this pandemic going to be over? That one I don't <laughs> if I can answer, but uh, how do I get along better with my fill in the blank? Uh, those kinds of questions I'd love to take a stab at, see what happy 88 tools I can give you for that. That's tomorrow. Keep it tuned here. Uh, this is the, this is the end of the show. Sorry, but we have to go. <laughs> but I'm so grateful that you have all been here to continue to support uh, my happy 88 mission, 88 million more happy people in the next eight years. I'm grateful for my guest today, Shane McCabe, uh, who brought us a lot of um, good advice, actually, if you wanna be a filmmaker, I think I, I, I'm gonna take a screenplay weekend course. I think yeah. that's what you said. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much, Shane, for You're coming welcome. on. You're welcome. Now, remember, everybody, that it's all about balance. You can do this with me, Shane. Peace in, peace out, world peace through inner peace. This is Dr. Marissa reporting live from her loving room during the pandemic, wishing you the best day ever. See you tomorrow. Great.